Computers can be a very powerful tool in trading because they can process, filter, and organize data much faster than humans can. Now, one of the ways that computers do this is by organizing the data into data structures. Data structures allow the computer to store the data in a way that allows it to process the data faster in its algorithms and disseminate that information back out to the user more easily. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how you can use a simple data structure in your own NinjaTrader 8 indicator. I use data structures in almost every indicator that I write, especially order flow indicators. There's just so many different ways of parsing out the data that the default indicators don't do. Utilizing data structures is one of the ways that you can gather statistical information about your instrument that most retail traders don't have. It allows you to create an edge that is completely unique to you. And the best part is data structures aren't even all that difficult to use. So let me show you how. I'm Speculator Seth. I'm a day trader that streams my full live trading session every day from 8.15 to 10.30 Eastern Time. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so that it'll be much easier for you to find us when we're live. For the example, I'm going to show you my range histogram. And what the range histogram does is it reorganizes your bar chart to show you what the range tends to be on the bars. So for instance, here I have the E-mini S&P 500 chart up, 30 minute bars. And here this largest spot here in the distribution profile is 19 with 37 samples. So what that means is there were 37 bars on the chart that had a range of 19. There's also area that is colored blue, 80% of all of the bars fall within that blue area. So here we can see the top of that distribution is 36. So 80% of all bars have a range less than 36. Now that is some real edge that I just gave you. So go ahead and click that like button. If you are in a trade and you intend on being in that trade for 30 minutes and you've made 36 ticks on it, you might want to think about taking that trade off because only 20% of the bars will go more than 36 ticks. Now, of course, my chart just shows you range, but I'm sure that you can come up with your own unique ideas that might provide some edge. Let me know in the comments what you come up with. I would love to know what kind of edges you guys are able to come up with from modifying this indicator. And of course, the indicator will be in the description below so that you can download it for free. And if you have any trouble modifying the indicator to get it to do what you want, let me know and I will totally help you debug things. I love to collaborate. I just gave you guys a one edge, but let's see what we can come up with it together. Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so the data structure that we're going to use today is called a dictionary. And a dictionary is very similar to another type of structure that you may already be familiar with called an array. Now, if you're not familiar with an array, an array is basically a variable that allows you to put other variables inside of it. So you can have an array and it has a bunch of buckets for integers. And what the array allows you to do is it allows you to carry out a particular process on every bucket in there. So you could have a bunch of integers in there and you wanna say, I want to add all of these integers together. Then you can iterate over that array and add them all up. Now, a dictionary and array are actually very different under the covers. But in terms of how we use them, they're very similar. But the big difference, the thing that the dictionary gives us is that the dictionary gives a name to every bucket. We call that the key. So for instance, for our use, the key is going to be the range. There's gonna be one bucket for one range, a bucket for two range, and then the value that we're gonna put into every bucket is going to be the number of bars that had that range. I'm sure you can imagine how that data structure would be set up for other applications. For instance, if we were doing a volume profile, then the key would be the price and the value would be the number of shares that actually traded at that price. 
Okay, so let's get into the code. And the first thing that we have to do is actually define the dictionary. And I'm going to do that right here at the top, just below the class definition, your public dictionary. And then we have to specify what type the key is and what type the value is. And then we're going to give it a name. We're going to call our dictionary profile and create the dictionary. Now, by creating here up at the top, it's going to be a class level variable. So I should be able to access it from all of the functions underneath and it will persist between function calls so that, you know, we can count things up on every run through of our on bar update. And of course, all of the main data handling is done down in on bar update, as is the case in most Ninja Trader 8 indicators. So what we're doing here, not too big of a function. The first thing is we're going to calculate the piece of information that we're actually tracking. So like I said, the range. Now there is a built-in range indicator, but it gives us that range in terms of price and we want it in terms of ticks. So I divide it by the tick size to get the number of ticks in the range. So now we need to find the correct bucket and increase the counter in the dictionary. Now there's a little issue with doing this and that is that when we create the dictionary, it's empty. There aren't any buckets in there. And so if we try and increment a bucket that doesn't exist yet, we're going to get an error. So we have to check and see if the bucket exists yet and if not create it. The way that we do that is we use this try get value and try get value goes in and tries to find the bucket. Here's the key that we're passing into it. So we say try get value, find me the bucket that is 16 ticks. If it doesn't find it, then it's going to run this bit of code right here and it's going to create a bucket and give it a default value of one. If it does find it, then what it's going to do is it's going to put the value into this um, out value variable that we created. So here we create the variable and we pass it in out value so that when we come down here, value will already be filled with what the value of that bucket was. Now, the reason we do it this way is to avoid extra operations. We don't want to call into the dictionary once to see if the bucket is there and then call again to get the value of that bucket. This way, we just do it all in one run. You see if the bucket is there and if the bucket is there, it's going to return to us the value. So now that we have the value, we just do value plus plus, which will increase it by one. And then we store it back into our dictionary. There are a couple of little extra things, and this mostly has to do with the drawing logic. For instance, I keep track of how many total samples there are, and this helps the drawing code draw the value area a little bit more quickly. I also set scale equals to true, and this is just a Boolean that I've added to tell the drawing code that it needs to resize it vertically because, you know, there's another element that's showed up here at the top. Now, how the drawing code works is probably a video for another day, but I am going to go over it really quickly just to give you an idea of how it uses the dictionary. But remember, you shouldn't have to change the drawing code, really. If you just want it to draw a profile like that, the drawing code is already done for you. All you have to do is change the data structure. But really quickly here, you know, I just have some code here to figure out which one is the bar, largest bar and what the value area is and everything like that. And then down here, here's the key part for each value in our dictionary, draw the row. And then I have another function down here to draw the row. And this does all of the calculations to figure out where the corner of this rectangle is and then draw the rectangle. So again, not terribly complicated, but it can be very powerful because now you can do things like you can filter which pieces of information do I actually want to put into my data structure. Maybe I don't want to put it in there if it's not with, you know, if the order is not a certain size. Maybe I want to group them together so that one through five is in one bucket and five through 10 is in another bucket. There's all sorts of different ways that you can organize the data. And it's a really, really flexible, not a ton of code, but really useful code. As I said, I use this in almost every order flow indicator that I create. That's what's going on underneath of the covers. So it's a really important concept to know. 
If you found this tutorial helpful, I really appreciate it. If you hit that like button, subscribe. And of course, I look forward to seeing you guys when I stream early in the morning. And until then, stay profitable, friends.